Well, hello everyone. I've got a very interesting video today. I'm going to take one iPad and I'm going to be able to control everything via MIDI and automate my full song setup. So I want to be able to, to click on an audio track, have the lyrics come up, have the lyrics highlighted so that I can see where I am in the song. I want to be able to send that to the other members of the band so that they can also see the song and the highlighted lyric. Uh, at the same time, I want to be able to bring up the patches here on my keyboard and as the song plays, that we change the patches on the song as the song plays along. So it'll be fully automated and I won't need to touch or press buttons at all. Just select the song and it'll do ever, everything else. And also if I had a vocal uh, processor or if I had a MIDI controller keyboard, I can also control them on the global MIDI settings. And half this video will be about MIDI programming and how to program this. I'm going to be using an app called Stage Track 3. And uh, Peter has done a lot of work in this app and he is giving good support and backup for the app. Now, uh, this is not a sponsored video or uh, it's just for information. And it's very interesting. It should work for all the tires keyboard. It should work for the Gina. It should work for Cog and Roland, and it uh, may not work for every keyboard, but I'd like you to test it out and let me know in the comments below whether you got it to work with your keyboard. Now, you must have a MIDI compatible keyboard for this to work. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not going to try and sell you anything. So, uh, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. It's totally free, and I would much appreciate it. So, let's go straight into the content now and I hope you get value from this also there are time codes in the description below if you want to see certain sections of this video okay so the first thing we're going to do is download stage track got my iPad here already and we're going to go in first to take a look in the app store I've already bought the program so we'll just take a look So here we got stage track. That's what it looks like. And uh, if we scroll down along here, so it works on iOS 13 or later, and for the iPhone the same, iOS 13 or later, or iPod Touch 13 or later, or the Mac operating system, you need 10.15 or later. For the iPad, it requires iOS 13 or later. You need to make sure that you have updated the program to the very latest version because Peter is updating the program all the time. So to get all the benefits of the program, we're going to very good support from Peter. So I'm going to update mine here now. Update. Okay, so that's done. Right, so now we've got our stage track downloaded and we've got the full version and we've updated our version and when you open up the program uh, well I've already songs loaded in but when you open up the program there'll be no songs in here so you'll be in the songs here you've got the tab, settings tab songs tab, playlist tab and history tab, okay so uh, we've got the settings which you can do all the settings uh, so in here you've got the song, so the first thing you want to do will be add in song. Now I've already a load of song added in. You would click on the plus sign up here and then you can add from the iTunes Music Library, from local, which is local, and cloud files. So you could airdrop them or, or drop them from your iTunes drive. Lyrics on song only and create a multi-track song. That's if you're doing the multi-track which you can do up to six tracks in a multi-track song. So a multi-track song. And you'd enter the name of the multi-track track song, the artist. And then you will create it, okay? And you can have up to six tracks in that multi-track song. And in the multi-track song, you will use the PDF file for lyrics and for car charts. Whereas the 
way I'm going to use this is I'm going to use a stereo track. So, you go plus, add song from music library, and then you have choices here then. So I go to songs, and here are my songs. Alright, big, 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 big pile of them there, okay? So, so we loaded a song a while ago called Huckle Buck Demo. So that's the song I loaded a few minutes ago. So we're going to put that now onto our playlist here. So we just select it, and you see a little arrow here comes up beside it, and then we say done. And then it says, it's importing the song. So now it's importing the song here into the song library on stage track, and it'll put it in here under the hex, which it has done. So there's the song. So if I select the song, I can play the song there now if I want. And you can see my lyrics are coming up. Okay. Now, the lyrics are coming up there on my song because we put the lyrics on the song in the information on iTunes. Uh, with the lyrics, we can have the lyrics scrolling in time to the song. Uh, but it won't be highlighted. But the best way to do it is to sequence the lyrics onto the song. So, so you do that by clicking on the little I icon and then you will get up here it says edit lyrics and you're going to edit lyrics and now you get your lyrics up here alright so if you put the cursor in at the start of the song then you get up this alright so we got a MIDI play the song uh, which we get into the MIDI later on so we can now time code the song so that the lyrics will flow in time with the song. So just a little clock here that puts in the lyrics. So if we, if we start our song, you know, Right, that's the song completed, and then you go save, done. And now we've got our song lyric, so let's just play back. So now you can see here, so, if I turn this around, you can get rid of that. Okay, so you can increase here the size, decrease the size. There you are, now that's running along lovely. I say, grab your baby there. You do the hustle book, do the hustle book. Okay. Right? So that's my song lyric. Okay. So it's done with the time codes. So we go back in here. You can see now it's all time coded. So now I know the time everything is happening at. The, that will stay with the song then, and the song lyrics will scroll in perfect time to where you have these time codes put in. So, save that. Okay, that's the first bit. And you can do that with all your songs. Okay, so now, you can edit your song in here as well. So, you can come back in here, and if you scroll down here, there's a couple of things here that are very good. So, you can speed it up. So, it's 100% at the moment. You can slow it down. You can change the key here up to six uh, semitones. Okay, so that's six semitones up. And six semitones down. Okay, so let's play the song here, right? Bit of it. There you are now, it's uh, down by three semitones. Okay, four or five, five tones up. Now, and that's audio, switching the audio in real time, which is amazing. I think that is amazing. 
So uh, the most you probably ever be using this is maybe up and down, maybe one or two or three. You should be able to sing the song near enough. So that's transposition, really. That's what that is. And also then you can speed the song up. So just think you might have a song that's going a bit slow or maybe a song that's going too fast. You can change uh, the speed of the song. So it'll slow down and speed up. Um, now you can do all these other things here as well. Um, left and right balance and so on. Color code songs. Uh, change the names here and stuff. Okay, so that's in there. Now when you have your songs done, you can make them playlists. So I have a playlist made here. So if I go back to my playlist. So I've got playlist. Alright. Main show. A pop show. A party hour show. And then some Irish stuff here. Alright. And then I've got all. So I've got one with all the songs. So this is the full song. So... So you can see there, at the moment I have 124 songs in here at the moment. A lot of medleys in there of three and four songs. Seven hours and four minutes of music there at the moment, just on this. At the moment, on my playlist. To make a playlist, you just go plus. Name your playlist in here. And then you can drag your songs into the playlist. Now, when you have a playlist opened... You can edit here. So as you click on the edit, the foot, you can change the orientation of the song. So if you want to lay out your songs different, you can do that. And then click on done. Okay, so if you're in the playlist, you can move your songs up and down. Now, all over now, from the stones, uh, you can see here now, there's a little thing there where I have changed the pitch of this song. So... If you come down here, you can see. So I've taken the song down by minus two. So that's two little ticks down. So it shows here that I've changed the key of that song. Okay. Now, if you're in songs, where well, you have all your songs, and just say, just say you have a song, and you have a second singer, and maybe the singer wants the song speeded up, slowed down, or they might want the key changed. Or they might want um, something done to play the song different. There's a new feature here now, which is on the latest version of this, where you can just you can pull a song out, and it says here duplicate. So um, just say we want to duplicate. Uh, well, let's let's just say Mr. Brightside, right? So just say we want to duplicate Mr. Brightside. Click on duplicate. And it says, Mr. Brightside, copy. I've made actually two of them there now. So, um, so then you can delete. So now I got a Mr. Brightside, the main file, Mr. Brightside, copy. And it uses the main audio file. So it's not creating any extra audio file, which is very good. Um, because it's not taking up any more space on your iPad. Because it's using the same audio file that was there from the beginning. Now you've got a second file here then that you can edit to your heart content. And it won't affect what you've done in the first file. So you might want to change the key first thing. Or, or you might have a member. Or you might be doing two shows. Or you might be backing up different singers. And you can make two playlists. And you can have different versions of the same song. But they're using the same audio file. So I think this is a brilliant, powerful feature of uh, this app. So I'm going to get rid of that Mr. Bright I copy. Delete. Okay. So that's that done. You can look at the stage track files which are here. After you have your files loaded in, you can see them there. It shows here the in-app purchases. Okay. Now here it says version. 3.7.4 is the version we're at at the moment. So that's what you need to have. 3.7.4. Uh, you can also um, host a session. So if you were uh, 
playing with somebody else and they have the program loaded on their iPad, you can host a session here and they can go and join a session and then all your lyrics and everything will come up on their iPad. Also, you've got playback settings here, playback settings. So you can do dub double tap to start the song. So I left that for single tap. Uh, stop button. Uh, you want to have it pause after every song or you can have it to go rewind or you can have it to jump to the next song. Double tap to stop. I have that to set to on. You can set these however you like. Stop it in the playlist. I have that left off. Auto load next song. I have that there. And all these are just left alone. You can also do a master tuning here of semitones and of synths. The next thing I need to do, want to do, is to get into the MIDI programming part of it. So there's a lot of MIDI programming on this and there's some global MIDI programming on this where you can control your pedals, uh, your, your vocal effects, um, all different things through MIDI. You can connect up Bluetooth devices. You can use an AirTorton setup, which which will be on the foot pedals. Uh, there's also a virtual MIDI output and MIDI output port. Now, here as well on the MIDI, you can send MIDI, load, play, stop, playback, ends. And then you've got an action one and an action two. Now, some of these are new features that have been added, that Peter has added. And you've got a sync, okay, and you can have it off or you can have frame per minute. Um, you can do the sample rate, which I've set for 44.1, that's default, and a buffer size, and, uh, and pod playback, okay. And the MIDI output ports, you can set them up in here as well. Um, you can also, if you have a devices, like with say a controller keyboard uh, with no sounds on it, a MIDI keyboard connected up or something like that, you can do MIDI learn or you might have foot pedals or different things set up. So you can do all these things in it to MIDI learn, which is global. This is like a global MIDI uh, part here. Now, there is, there is the other MIDI part of the song which I'm going to use. So if we come back into the songs, this Hucklebuck demo song we're going to use for this. And if we come back in here again into where the lyrics was, we can program MIDI in here. In here then you can put your MIDI commands. I'm, I'm going to program the MIDI to change all the patches on my Tyrus keyboard. Okay, so here we've got our Tyrus 2. I'm in the bank here where I've got all my patches here set up. And I'm using one song per uh, eight buttons. Uh, in other words, one song per registration or one song per, per program or whatever it's called. On the, on the Yamaha, it's called the registration memory, which you've got eight buttons per song, or you could put them individually, but I use just eight buttons for one song. So I name each of my songs on here then, and I have them all in one bank. And I can have up to 500 songs in the one bank in here on my tires. Okay? Because that's the limit of the folder on the tires keyboard. Now, your, your uh, keyboard might be different, but on the Yamaha tires keyboards, the limit on the folder is 500 songs in one folder. Now, via MIDI, I'm going to use my the old iPad. Okay, so here we've got stage track 3 opened up and we've got all my songs down here and I've got the bank opened here on my tires where all the patches are, are stored and if I select with the song on my iPad here we'll say I saw her standing there and now you see it'll change so I saw her standing there it's come up it's landed me here on the first button of the registration so let's completely set up my keyboard ready to play. So, is anybody going to San Antonio? Set up my registrations and it has landed me on button one. And it landed me there on the instrument I want. 
to start that song. So there we go, it's the heartache. Select it's the heartache on here on stage track three. Right? And it's landed me on button one here, it has picked the patches here for me, my registration. Automatically without me doing anything. So here I am ready to play the song. So I think you get the idea. So any song I select on here. Say hold on to your hat. Just pick hold on to your hat. Landed me on button one. I just do it one. And now I am ready to play, okay? Well, so here comes my baby. And here, pick patch, here comes my baby. Right? Land me on button one. Land me a breath. Which is what I need to start that song. So you get the idea. So any song I select on here, It'll bring up the corresponding registration bank. It'll set me up on button one. And it'll bring up the, the bank here I want. It'll select the song here for me. And I'll have patches here ready to go. And I can also make it, as the song plays off the iPad, I can make it select the button along as the song plays. So now I'm going to show you First of all, how to set up the MIDI here first, so I'm, I'm, and what I'm doing, uh, to set up the MIDI to communicate with the iPad. So, we're going to do the MIDI settings in here now, we're going to take a look. Right, so you're going to function, MIDI. And I've got iPad 8, which is, that's an iPad 8, I've got the receive. So I've got a bank set up here, um, so let's take a look and see what's in here. On your transmit here, you want to turn all these off. Alright. So transmit, now receive. Okay, so these are MIDI A here, so we're, we're coming out on MIDI B. So we scroll down here until we find, we're still on MIDI A, right? Keep going here until we find. Okay, so now we've got MIDI B, USB 2, which is the same thing, channel 1. So we want to be coming out on channel 1. And then we want to have all these switched on. And we have everything else here switched off. Alright, now it's very important to do this and have all the other switched off. Otherwise you're going to get a problem with the notes and stuff. Alright, so then you just save that then into a, a make and, cut and name it. So like I've done here, your iPad is received. Okay, so um, I'm a user here, so I'm on a user. So normally here you'll be here in our pair. Right, so then for this, for this you just select user here and you just select that and then you come out. That's your MIDI setup for your uh, tiles. Now just one more thing while I'm in here. So what you have to do with the song. Okay, so well first of all you have to go into the bank for all your songs and just select the first song and then the MIDI will pick it up. Uh, the second thing is, if we go into here, the view, you will see here all these numbers here. Though they're permanent, it goes from one all the way down, and you can have up to 500 songs. Now, what I've done here is then at, at the beginning of each of my songs, I've put the number 001 corresponding to the 001 all the way down and the only reason I've done that is to keep all the songs in order to correspond with these numbers because this is the number that the MIDI is picking up the first line of numbers here that's what the MIDI is picking up because they are fixed numbers and that's what the MIDI sees and it, it picks up to it picks up that number 
when you get down into 127, you've got the MIDI problem of the 127, the 128 MIDI. I mentioned this before. So normally on a lot of things, but I've worked this out. When you get to 127 songs, 128 songs, then you can't put any more songs on. Right, so I can bring up 128 songs, okay? And then you've got to start again as song 129 will become 001. And you'll have to change the number on the LSB, MSB part of the system. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And you'll keep going in here again. You'll name all these songs here, as you can see. I've named them all here, look. Song 139, Waterloo. 011 one, and so on down 12 13 14 15 all the way up to 127 and when you get to when you get that 127 again you start again and then you use two in the lsb uh, part of the uh, thing now i'm going to show you all this so it'll all make sense but first of all you've got to name all your songs and then leave this bank alone then and don't change the name you've got an ipad Running stage track three, and I've got all my songs here loaded on. So I've got my Tyrus 2 keyboard here, and I want to be able to select the song. So let's say, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? And it brings up, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? We'll say, Here Comes My Baby. And it selects, Here Comes My Baby. It lands me on the first registration button here of my registration memory. I saw her standing there and it brings up the patches here, I saw her standing there and it lands me on the first registration button here. If I want to do this song next, we'll say I just want to dance with you. So here now it has set me up, so it's gone on button two here. So it's got my marimba and I could play this off the keyboard if I wanted. So. Right. So in other words, I've got options, and I can also let the track go here on my iPad and play, and it'll it'll play the patches for me. So we're going to go in here today, and we're going to program the back of this, and we're going to do this using MIDI, which means that I can make any playlist I want in on my iPad. And I can stay here in one bank of songs, up to 500 songs on my Tyrus keyboard can be programmed with this. Because 500 songs is the limit of the Tyrus keyboard in one folder. Which is brilliant. Uh, so we're going to program the MIDI in the back of this. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to do one song here called the Hucklebuck Demo, which I have loaded on this. Okay, so there we've got our iPad plugged in. Now, on here... On my uh, keyboard, on this patch, if I just if I just come out of here, so you can see now I've got a growl sax and sax section here layered, and I've got different volumes set here for them. So um, the next part of the song I wanted to move on to this. Just give me a straight grand piano, and then I wanted to move on to this for because of the lead part. So I have that done there again, and then I wanted to move on to piano there again, and then I wanted to move on to big brass trumpet for another lead there in the middle, and then I wanted to drop back onto grand piano again, which grand piano here, and I wanted then to have a, a finish with brass. Okay, so, instead of me trying to think of all this, pressing all this, when I play my song on here, I can get the MIDI, via MIDI, to change all these patches along automatically as the song plays. So I don't have to worry about pressing the buttons. I just concentrate on the playing. So we're going to program the MIDI in the back of this. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to do one song here called the Hucklebuck Demo, which I have loaded on this. And uh, we're going to go in in the back end. So I have all my songs loaded on the iPad. 
and if I select the little eye icon here that will bring me in here into this display and then what I do is I go edit lyrics and in here in the edit lyrics I've already got the time coded now I, I showed you how to do that time coded so up here then in top I can just put my cursor in I'm going to program CC CC00 CC32 and I'm going to do a program change as well so that's two continuous controllers on one PC uh, program that's to start off with that will select my song for me and it'll land me on the first button so how do we do it? so first we need to go to get it going with square brackets and then because we're doing MIDI we do MIDI M-I-D-I and then we do uh, a colon so that's the colon a very important thing you put a space and then we go then we write our first cc which will be cc zero dot zero at zero and then we put a comma and then we write our next cc which is the cc 32 so this is uh, lsb msb lsb cc32 and uh, dot zero now we've got to find the song so we're doing uh, the hucklebuck demo so let's just so now we've got to find what number we need to put in here to, to find the song so so where we get this from is we get it in here so let's just see now Right, so we can see the huckle bucket here. Okay, and the number of the song is 085. And I've numbered the song there 085. Now, because the MIDI is going one behind, we need to program this as 84, which is the one, the song before it. So you'll have to do this at each one. Just program the song before the song you want to land on. So that's our 84. So we put 84 in there, 84, and then we go at 1, because we're going out to MIDI 1, and then we go call on. Now we need to do a program change, which is the PC, and uh, that is to pick whatever registration button here we want to land on. Once it has selected the song, we want it to land on a registration button here, okay? Now, how to do that is we go PC, a program change, PC, uh, so it'll be PC0 at, uh, at 1, because it's uh, channel 1. Now, the, the PC0 is the 0 before the 1. So if I wanted to land here on the 1, on this registration button here, I've got to program the zero before it. Now I'll be programming other buttons and I'll show you it'll all make sense. Uh, at one and then what we do is then we close the brackets and everything has gone blue. So that should have worked. So let's just say we take a view here. Let's just say we select easy right. Uh, now let's see will it work. So save it done uh, let's just come back up here and select here comes my baby okay here comes my baby now let's select the hucklebuck demo and there we go it's landed on the hucklebuck so. okay so you can see there it's landed on the, the hucklebuck <laughs> now uh, let's go back in again now. So, so first of all, after that lead, uh, I want to fall back here onto button two, and I want to fall back onto piano. But I'm going to play in piano here as the uh, the song is playing. Okay. So, and then 
here at this sax solo I wanted to move the tree and so on right, right to the end so let's try that okay so we go we go up here again and we come on to a new line and we're going to program when the song gets to time zero eight which starts this verse here so zero zero dash zero eight and uh, we don't bother with the two nine point two nine uh we want the keyboard to change to piano so that's what we wanted to do now how do we program that so we take a new line we go square bracket we go medi and we go at because we want we want this to happen at a certain time and now we're going to give it the time zero zero colon and we're going to go with um so let's have a look on our ipad here we're going to go with zero eight so let's try zero eight that's the time we want it to happen and then we go colon and then we go space and we want it to land on button two so we've got to do a, a program change here a pc pc got to do pc one at one so uh, that's at ch channel one because we're going out here on medi medi channel one and we're going to tell it to land on one here program one which will land us on button two now i know this is getting confusing but we're always one we're always one behind in the numbers so if we want something to land on two we have to program one so it's pc one at one which is channel one uh medi one which is the medi channel that we're going out on and then we just close the brackets and it's all gone blue so that should be fine and let's just save it done now let's try again just pick another song first here so we go here comes my baby doesn't matter what song right so it's going to here comes my baby now and just say the next song up hucklebuck demo hucklebuck and it landed me on button one okay and now we want it to go to button two as the song plays so let's just uh, see <laughs> And there we go, they changed the two and I've gone to piano. Okay. Now let's come back one again. Go back in. Now, what's the next thing I want to program? I want to program. It does a sax solo here. Down here you can see it here, sax solo. <laughs> So I wanted to go to that sax solo. So let's program that. Let's go back up here. So we go brackets, square brackets, MIDI, and then we go MIDI at, and then we go. Uh, it'll be zero zero. It'll be colon, and then we got to look down here. Uh, so the sax solo comes in at. Zero zero call on forty three. So that's where I'm getting that number there from. Just in case you're wondering uh, where I'm getting the numbers from. So zero zero forty three. So you go forty three and then you go call on and then you go space. And now we've got to do a PC change, which is the program change. Um, and this one we've got to go to button two. So we got the program button two in order to make button three come up. So we program two, two, at one because we're going out on channel, medi channel one. And I hope this makes sense. And then we close square bracket. That has worked. And then we go save it. Done. Now let's uh, let's just uh, pick. Here comes my baby. And stick with what we're doing. Here comes my baby, has selected here comes my baby, so landed me on one, here, 
so now let's just go to the Hucklebuck. So I've selected here my Hucklebuck. It has landed me on button one. Let's play the Hucklebuck. And now it's going to change here to piano, right? Okay, so, so you can see there the winter button three for this sax solo in here. So when it came to the sax solo, uh, which was time zero zero colon four three into the song, it changed my button registration bank button here and brought up the patch again for the brass. So now we got so now I want to fall back onto the piano here on 4, so let's program that. So we go square brackets, MIDI, you should be getting the hang of this by now, MIDI, and then we go at. So we got to say what, at what time we want this to happen, so we are we want it to come in about here, so a minute. So if you look here on the song, where our song is coded, we we'll say we want it to come in on, uh, we're on verse 2, so we want it to come in on 01, call on 01 is what the time we want, okay? So, medi at 01, call on 01 into song and then we go call on and then we go space and then we go program change three because we want to land on button four so so we have to go three at one and we've gone out medi channel one from our keyboard right wirelessly to our ipad so then we go close square bracket and that's that programmed, okay? Uh, so let's do one more. So, so what do we want to happen next? So that'll be landing on four. So we've got a brass coming up next, so let's just see. Okay, so we'll be on piano for that, and then we we'll come here to another sax solo in F1.35. So uh, we'll program another one here for 1.35. Or button 5, get this text here to come up, so let's program that. So we go square brackets, MIDI, at, and then we put in the time, which will be 01, colon 35, colon, right, so where do we get that? We got that down here in our song. Right? Sack solo at 0, 1, colon, 35. Never mind the, the other bit. Sack solo, okay? So that's what we've programmed in. And then we go space. And now we're going to do a program change. PC. And we want it to land on button 5. So we need to program button 4, which is 4. And then we go at 1, again we come going out, MIDI 1, and then we close the square brackets, and that's that one done. Okay? Now, after the sax solo there, what do we got? So let's just return. Uh, we got this button. So we want to drop back to a uh, piano again. Uh, fairly quick after that, so we'll be going to, um, that's our sax solo there, at 0, 01, colon 35, and then we're going to do 0, 01, colon 53, to bring it in here, 
again for piano for this verse. So I want to be back on piano for this verse after the stack solo. So let's program that. So here we go again now. It's getting easy now, isn't it? Square brackets, midi, at, time is zero, 01, colon, 53, colon, space, and then we're going to do a program change, which is PC for program change, and we're going to do it at, so we want to change uh, to button 6, so we're going to do 5. So it will be 5 at 1, close square brackets. Okay, so there's an ending, uh, so we need to do one of the endings. So, so we need to do one for 245, so the top, open brackets, medi. At zero two colon forty five. Let's just check that. Two forty five is at the end of the song. And then we got colon space. Now uh, then we got to do a program change. And we need to program button six, so we need to put six at one close square brackets and that will give us to the end of our song so save and done now all that's left to do is test it so i'm going to do a little demonstration if i can let's see now how this will work Okay now, it changed there automatically to button 2, so now I'm on piano. Now we've got a tax solo coming up. Change, I change it back to my piano. Back solo here coming up. Back again to piano. And there we have it. And it changed all the patches automatically. Now, oh, we're going to see what happens when we read. 127th song. Okay, so here I've made up a chart. I've developed this chart myself uh, to help you to understand the programming of the MIDI. And we've got our MSB, most significant byte, LSB, least significant byte. We've got the wedge bank number on the which will be on when it's on my tiles, which will be on your keyboard. And here then we've got the number that you'll be programming. So you'll be going from um, 0, 0, 0 to one twenty seven. That's the first batch that you'll be programming. Okay? Now, when we're programming DMSB on the first batch of song, which will get us to song 128, here, right? We'll be programming the zero, zero, zero 
at Devo in here, in the MSB. And they will be putting in the number of the song in the LSB, not 127. Right? And as you know, you're always one behind. So on your keyboard, that will be landing you on song 001 to 128. Right? Which is still 127 songs. Okay? So you can see it here. 0, 0, 0 to 127, right? That's what you're programming, and it's going to land you here on one song 128 by the time you're finished programming that. Now, so what happens when we land on this 128 star? What happens then when we go to the next star, which is 129 here? What happens? Okay, so how do we do that? Right, so let's just clear some of this. So, back on our MSB, then we're going to use, we're going to change the number here to 1. Alright? So that's what we'll be putting in here, we'll be putting in this 1. And on our LSB, then we'll be starting off again at 0, up to 127. Alright? And the reason that this works is because we'll put 1 in here, on our MSB. And then we can start off again and we can do our LSB from 0 to 127. Now I hope this makes sense. On our red bank number on our tire, that then we'll be landing on song 129 up to 256. And for programming it then, we'll be programming because we're here on the, on the thing, we'll be programming from 128 which will land us at 129 up to 255, just what we'll be programming. Alright? So now what, what happens when we get to the next back to song? Alright? So, so we, we, we went from 129 up to 256. Right? So that's the song we have at the moment, and we programmed them here at 255. Alright? Right? So when you program 255, you'll land on 256. I hope this makes sense. Because you're always programming one number behind. So now what we got to do is, now we're going to go again, we're going to start off again, and we're going to put our MSB at number 2. And we're starting off then again from 0, from our song 0 to 127. Cover the next back song. So that'll be 257, 358. Right? That's what we covered off on our tire numbers when you program them. And what we will be programming in, we'll be programming in between 256 and 383. Our 383 here will land us back on our 384. That'll be song 384. So now what happens? We've got another 127. Now we've reached our medi limit again. So now what do we do? Well, I say you got the idea of this now by now. On our MSB for the next batch of numbers we're going to go three. So the zero zero dot three at one. Our LSB then we'll be going from zero to hundred and fifteen. And on our bank batch numbers then that will land us be pulling up song three hundred and eighty five to five hundred. So three eighty five to five hundred. So this 500 here then is our 500 song. But that's 500 songs which is the limit of a folder on our tire keyboard or on uh, all the tire keyboards. Okay? And to pro the programming of that we will be going from 384 to 499. So when we, when we program song 499 because we're all with one behind, that will land us on song 500. So I hope all this makes sense. And I'll do a couple of practical examples of the MIDI behind in order to explain this. So when we get to 127 songs because of the MIDI limitations, how do we program songs after 127? So I'm going to show you here how I set that up. So, so let's select this all house. So this all house, that's your 100, 128 is the time we're looking for, right? 
So, and I selected this old house, song 120A, which will be the last song you can program because you're using the, the number before the 120A. So, let's just see this old house, what's programmed in this old house. So, we have a look in here, into the lyrics. So, you can see in order to land on 120A, you have got uh, the CC talked to with that 127 at 1. So that's 127 at 1, which is the song before 128. And that'll land you on song 128. Now that's the last song that you can program because of the, the 127 limitations, many limitations. Alright? So, so now what I've done is, when you get here... 127, you've got to start then again, 0 to 128 songs for the next batch of songs. So this number out here will always stay the same because, uh, and your song, I've always keep these the same. So you go 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, so on, and you name your song here, 128, 129, 131, and so on. Now, out here on the end of the song, then what you'll do is, in order to keep track of all these numbers, because it, it'll get confusing, you want to where you are with the song, you start here at 128, and you put in 0, 0, 0, and then you go the wonder of you, 0, 0, 1, the wonder of 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 5, all the way again to 127 songs. All right? So, now let's just stay. Let's just say you want to program the walk of life. So let's just select the walk of life. So on my iPad here, I'm going to select the walk of life. And you see my song has been selected. On my tile, land me on button one, like we were doing before. Okay. So let's have a look at the back of the walk of life and see what have I programmed in. Now once you understand this, then you're away. So now you can see here I've programmed MEDI, core and space, CC0.1 at 1, because the first 127 you're programming 0, 0, 0, the second 127 you're programming 0, 0, 1, or 1, so you can shortcut it there, 1, at 1, alright? Then the CC32 then, in order to select the song then, you're going to program CC, Toss the two dots, just like we were before, zero, zero, nine, which is one song before the zero, zero, ten. So you're using this number now on the CC toss the two to pick your song. And the PC then, the program change to select your button. That part of the programming, as I showed with the other programming, that stays the same to select your song. Right? So... So you can do this then up to four times. So so when you do this 127 song, the next one then you'll be doing two. So you'll be going CC0.2 at one. And then you'll be going CC to two. And you'll be you'll have your next 127 song to get named different numbers here. Not 127 numbers, I mean. Now I hope this is making sense.